welcome to another edition of the Nightly News. I'm Chris Lee here with LPNN bringing you all the news that is news and none of the news that isn't most of the time. Tonight's episode is brought to you in part by our amazing sponsors. We have H&R Block right here in Page, Arizona, the Page Public Library, and Big John's Texas Barbecue. A big shout out to them for helping us get you guys the news in real time. And thank you guys for being here and thank you for liking, commenting, and sharing on all of these videos. We really do appreciate it. All right, we've got some comments over here. Michael says, good evening, Chris. Good evening, Michael. Good to see you. Thanks for being here. Gene says, hello, Chris. Hope to be up there in September for a week. Awesome. I can't wait for you to get up here. It is going to be amazing, I'm sure. Gina's given us the wave. Good to see you, Gina. Thanks for being here. Steven says, what? Dominoes? We'll get to that in just a minute, guys. Stay tuned. All right, let's go ahead and jump right on into the news, shall we? All right, in state news here, the Arizona seatbelt law. A proposed bill that would have expanded Arizona's seatbelt law has died in a Senate committee. The Senate panel quashed the bill after calling the measure intrusive, according to Arizona Capital Times. The sponsor of the bill, Representative Bob Thorpe of Flagstaff, was able to obtain only one member of the Committee on Health and Human Services to support his measure, House Bill 2460. The measure required all occupants in a vehicle to be restrained. Thorpe's argument against the existing law is that it requires restraints of front seat occupants only and is insufficient. The largest objection came from allowing police to pull someone over just for not using a seatbelt. Arizona law currently prohibits police from pulling someone over solely for not wearing a seatbelt, but allows for a citation to be issued if they are pulled over for another reason. The fine for a seatbelt violation is $10. However, there are mandatory seatbelt laws for children. Other concerns from the committee ranged from giving police more reasons to stop vehicles to the state intruding on personal responsibility to the possibility that it could result in over-policing of certain state populations. One argument against the measure was from Senator Rebecca Rios of Phoenix, claiming that the measure contradicts the state's current laws which allow for children and adults to be in pickup truck beds. All right, let's see what else we have here for you guys tonight. On to our recall. Let me check the comments before we move on. Melissa says, yay, another pizza place. Hey, we got to start somewhere. And uh, Jerome says, yes, Domino's finally. Well, we'll see. Uh, we'll get to that here in just a minute, guys. Let's go ahead and pull this up. This is our recall, one of our recalls for tonight. Baby cough syrup. There is an article that goes more in depth at lakepalnews.com if you guys want to check out what lots it is. But this is the Dollar General Health Naturals Baby Cough Syrup plus mucus is being recalled due to a potential bacterial contamination. The cough syrup, which was sold at Dollar General stores nationwide, can put babies at risk for vomiting, diarrhea, and in some cases, it could be fatal. Kingston Pharma is recalling one lot of two fluid ounce or 59 milliliter bottles of the cough syrup because it could be contaminated with Bacillus cereus or Bacillus circulans. According to the FDA, Bacillus cereus in food products has the potential to cause vomiting and diarrhea. The company said it has not received any reports of illnesses in connection with the recalled product. The recalled bottles are marked lot KL180157 with an expiration date of 1120 on the bottom of the carton and the back of the bottle label. The UPC uh, you can find on the article. The recall was made after Kingston discovered the presence of Bacillus cereus and Bacillus circulan in some bottles from the affected lot during audit testing. According to the recall, 1 in 10 bottles show low levels of Bacillus cereus and 2 in 10 bottles showed low levels of Bacillus circulans. According to the FDA, production of the product has been suspended while the investigation into the source of the problem continues. Consumers who have purchased the recalled product may return them to the place of purchase for a full refund. Also, <clears throat> excuse me, also another recall, this one for dog food. Once again, there is an article up at lakepalnews.com if you guys want to get more into the specifics for this. 
But Hills Pet Nutrition is expanding its canned dog food recall due to continuing concerns of elevated vitamin D levels, adding more to a growing list of dog foods that have recently been recalled for the same reason. The latest information from Hills Pet Nutrition says that canned dog food purchased between September 1st of last year and March 21st of this year are recalled as they may be affected. This recall does not include dry foods, cat foods, or treats. The elevated vitamin D levels are being attributed to a manufacturer error. The affected products were distributed to stores and veterinary offices nationwide. The FDA is still investigating the situation and working with the manufacturer. The FDA is also requesting that veterinarians or owners who suspect vitamin D overdose in their patients and pets to report them to the FDA. Let me go ahead and check the comments real quick. Stephen says, good evening from Atlanta. Good evening, Stephen. Thanks for being here. We appreciate it. And thanks for liking, commenting, and sharing. Uh, Tori says, uh, we need something different. Pages full of pizza and burger places. We're not there yet. Hold on, guys. We're almost there. All right, moving on to some other local stuff here. The Coconino County Sheriff's Department. This morning, around 7 a.m., the Coconino County Sheriff's Office responded to a domestic violence in progress in the Donnie Park area. The only information available at the time was that one victim was deceased and the suspect was taken into custody in Yavapai County at around 9.30 this morning. Coconino County Sheriffs have released more information regarding that situation. As deputies were en route, a reporting party advised that the male suspect had fled the scene. Upon arrival, deputies located a female victim with several stab wounds and requested medics. The victim was later pronounced deceased on scene. She was later transported to the Coconino County Medical Examiner's Office, which will conduct an autopsy and further investigation to determine the cause of death. The victim has been identified as 35-year-old Crystal L. Morgan of Donnie Park. The suspect was known to be the spouse of the victim. Later in the morning, investigators received information that the suspect was in a vehicle headed southbound on I-17. An attempt to locate was given to Northern Arizona law enforcement agencies to assist in apprehending the suspect. The vehicle the suspect was traveling in was located southbound on I-17 near the McGuireville exit. A traffic stop was initiated with the assistance of Yavapai County Sheriff's Office and the Arizona Department of Public Safety. The suspect was then taken into custody. Timothy M. Duran, 38-year-old Donnie Park resident, was booked into the Coconino County Detention Facility on charges of first-degree homicide and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. This investigation is ongoing, and at this time, no other information is available. All right, uh, let's go ahead and move on to what everyone here seems to be waiting for. It uh, is rather interesting. Let me see if I can't pull this up for you here. All right. Now, we do have some information for you. <clears throat> Let me check the comments, and I'll let you guys see this picture. Uh, John says, good evening, LPNN. Good evening, John. Thanks for being here. And thanks for liking, commenting, and sharing on all of these. John says, uh, we need pandas and Carl's Jr. All right, all right. Here is the article on the Domino's. Domino's Pizza may soon be coming to page. Posted today in the City Council's regular agenda, uh, scheduled for Wednesday, March 28th. I believe that might actually be the 27th. We'll have to double check that date. But they're having that meeting on a Wednesday. The council will be reviewing information being presented by Ronald Kearns on behalf of DR Pizza Incorporated. They will be presenting to city council a concept plan for a possible location of a Domino's Pizza in the Block 17 area. The location is proposed to be in the far northwest corner of Block 17 near State 48 Tavern. If the proposal is approved by the City Council, according to the concept plan submitted by DR Pizza Incorporated, the store is projected to be up and operational by April of 2020. Per the current agenda, the Council will be entering executive session to discuss the proposal and a possible land sale or lease for Domino's Pizza in Block 17. You can see the proposed location from the concept plan on our website. Uh, once again, at lakepalnews.com. But if uh, for those of you guys that are from around here, you will recognize over there, that is where they used to sell the used cars. Everyone would put up their cars for sale on that corner. Bank of the West is uh, just across the street from it, and the Page Hospital is just on the other side. 
and uh, State 48 is right in this area here. All right, let's see what else we've got here for comments, guys. Darby says, hooray for Domino's. And John says, oh, hold on, it just slipped up here. John says, pandas will be awesome if they make it. And Gina says, I do like Domino's. Well, the good news is we have to start somewhere. So the more new businesses that we get in here, the better off we are. It, it uh, might not be your particular cup of tea, but we do have to start and uh, that is a good start. Hopefully it ends up happening. We'll keep an eye on it for you and keep you guys updated. All right, let's go ahead and move on to some other news here. Let's see what else we have. All right, uh, there is an additional boat launch location coming up here in Lake Powell. Visitors, of Glen, uh, visitors to Glen Canyon National Recreation Area are advised that while the north launch ramp at Bullfrog Marina remains open and available to all boaters, the main launch ramp is closed due to lower water levels. An additional launch location for vessels up to 20 feet in length will be opened on March 22nd in order to provide an alternate location for launch and retrieval. Uh, this alternate launch point is adjacent to the eastern side of the main launch ramp. All right, let me check the comments real quick before we move on. Michael says, uh, I like Domino's. Well, all right. I haven't had Domino's in 20 years, but I am excited for any new business that wants to come here to Page. Let's go ahead and move on to some events we have here. The Economic Development Advisory Board next week on Tuesday, March 26th, the Economic Development Advisory Board will be having their very first meeting. On the agenda are presentations and discussions regarding the May 20th, 2019 Housing Symposium, the hashtag Elevate Page Workforce and Education Initiative, and the 2020 Census. The meeting begins at 5.30 at Page City Hall. On Wednesday, March 27th, the City Council will be holding three meetings. So it was the 27th. The first meeting is a special meeting beginning at 5.30. On the agenda is discussion and possible action pertaining to a presentation of the results from a water study done by Corallo Engineering. Immediately following the special agenda is the Council's regular agenda, which begins at 6.30. On that agenda are those three main items. The first is discussion and possible action pertaining to a 150,000 gallon elevated water tank interior rehabilitation project. The second is the presentation pertaining to Domino's Pizza, as discussed earlier in the broadcast. And the third is an executive session regarding said Domino's Pizza. The final meeting is a work session starting at 7 p.m. On the agenda is discussion pertaining to the fiscal year 2019 and 2020 budget. All of the council's meetings on Wednesday will be held at Page City Hall. Also coming up is the Page Chamber of Commerce's uh, Best of Page. If you guys are interested in voting for who is the best in page for a business that you like, you can go to the Chamber of Commerce's website and vote there. Also coming up is the Easter egg hunt. Don't forget about that. That is April 13th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. They are still looking for volunteers, so if you guys are willing to help out, they're going to have about 1,500 people expected to be there for that Easter egg hunt. They need help laying those or laying those eggs putting the eggs out in the field and uh, getting everything cleaned up afterwards and the set up, the whole nine yards. If you guys are interested in volunteering for that, they'd like you to call 928-691-0208. All right, let's go ahead and jump onto the weather and uh, see what that has in store for us. It's been uh, a little windy today, a little bit drizzly, nothing too horrifying, but definitely an interesting day. We check the comments before we jump in there. Luke says, uh, do you believe uh, that taxation is theft? This is the news and not an opinion show. So wrong format for that, Luke, but thank you. John says, uh, that's true. We have to start somewhere, but it would be awesome to have a pandas. I agree with you, but hey, at least we're getting somewhere. <laughs> All right, so the weather tonight. We have a low of 41 degrees. And tomorrow on Friday, we got a high of 60 with a low of 41, partly cloudy. And as you can see, just a hint of a chance of rain in the wee morning hours there, about a 24% chance. On Saturday, a high of 63 with a low of 44. And on Sunday, a high of 66 with a low of 42 and sunny out there. All right, let's go ahead and jump onto the local calendar of events and see what we have coming up tomorrow. 
Tomorrow at 10 a.m. is DVD exercises over at the Community Center. At the Page Public Library is Teen Friday's Adult Coloring Books. At 1 p.m. at the library is Kids Laptops and Movie Kung Fu Panda. And at 6.15 p.m. at the Community Center is Zumba. All right, guys, that is all we have time for tonight. Thank you so much for being here, and thank you for liking, commenting, and sharing on all of these videos. We really do appreciate it. We will catch you on the next one. Have an epic night, and we'll see you tomorrow morning on The Morning Cup. Until then.